I want to welcome you to our service this evening for Holy Thursday, Maundy Thursday, remembering the Last Supper of Jesus and disciples. Tomorrow night, I want to remind you there's a community Good Friday service at 5.30 around the corner at the Lutheran Church. And then, of course, Sunday's Easter Sunday, and we'll be having our regular services at 9.30 and 10.45. We're glad you're here this evening. Let me invite us to pray as I read the scriptures and share a message. Gracious God, we thank you for this evening and a remembrance, and we pray that as we read the scriptures and share from your word, that your word might be heard even through my words and through our music and through all of our worship together. In the name of Christ, amen. The story of this evening is found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 26 to 29. The prelude to this is, of course, Jesus has gathered his disciples for a Passover meal. And here are the words. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. May God bless the reading of his word. Maundy Thursday takes its name from the Latin word mandate or command because on this evening Jesus commanded his disciples, including us, the only new commandment he ever gave us, which is that we love one another as Christ has loved us. And he also mandated or instituted uh, this evening's meal together. And it probably looked like the painting we're going to have. On, oh, not that one. Back up. Well, we have a painting of uh, the Last Supper, the meal together. Uh, that's not it. That's not it either. Well, we have it. It, it doesn't look... Ah, oh, we found it. Okay. There you go. It probably looked more like that uh, than it does the painting we often have seen of Leonardo da Vinci. Da Vinci's painting always looks to me like somebody said, everyone who wants the picture get on this side of the table. <laughs> and it's always shown as if it's kind of a glamorous setting. This is probably a little more like it. It was a very common, humble meal. People reclining at tables as was the custom of the day until it became something more. When Jesus took the bread and blessed it and said, this is my body broken for you. And when he took the cup, likely the cup of Elijah, in that meal and said this is my blood of the new covenant given for you and for many drink from this in remembrance of me so monday comes from mandate new commandment and from the institution of the supper imagine that jesus only gave us one new commandment all those commandments in the old testament and he only gave us one new commandment he mandated that we love one another and ironically when he gave that commandment judas was at the meal Judas was there, the one who later betrayed Jesus. Now, what was it Judas betrayed? Well, he basically betrayed the location where Jesus could be found and arrested privately instead of arresting him in the middle of the city with all the crowds who were starting to follow Jesus, listen to his teachings, and just wonder at his miracles. So Judas betrayed the location, which was the Mount of Olives. And so here's a picture of the Mount of Olives, the one we had before. Next slide, there you go. That's today. That's looking at the city of Jerusalem from the east, from the Mount of Olives. It's a little hard to tell in the picture, but you're up high. And then to go down to Jerusalem, you go down to the Kidron Valley and back up to Jerusalem. The Kidron Valley uh, runs a creek running along there, and toward the south end of that is what they called Gehenna, uh, which in Hebrew uh, was a word for hell. It was a place where all the refuse from the city was dumped and burned, and so it was a smelly, constantly burning area, and it became kind of the symbol for hell. But from here, it's a beautiful sight, from the Mount of Olives. That's where Jesus and his disciples were camping out. And it's called the Mount of Olives because the olive trees were there on the mountain, and they're still there today. Uh, if you carbon date, which they have, some of these trees, they date back 2,500 years. They date back before the time of Jesus. So if you go and visit the Garden of Gethsemane on the Mount of Olives, some of the trees that are there would have been there 
to witness the events of this evening when Jesus was betrayed. Gethsemane means, it's a Hebrew word for olive press. So where Jesus and his disciples went in the evening, they went up on the Mount of Olives across from Jerusalem. They probably camped out, being people with little or no means for hotels or rooms. And it was there that Judas betrayed his location. So think about this evening as a time when Jesus prayed and was betrayed. And here's the thing. Judas was only the first betrayer. (laughs) We know that later that evening before the rooster crowed in the next morning, Simon Peter, his maybe closest, most powerful disciple, Simon Peter denied three times that he even knew Jesus. So Judas betrayed Jesus' location. Simon denied he knew him. But if you read Mark 14, 50, that little verse kind of tucked away in the Gospels, it says, after Jesus' arrest, all the disciples, all the disciples forsook him and fled. So do you know what that means about this evening meal that we're remembering and celebrating tonight? It means Jesus served his bread and his cup to a company of betrayers. That's a term one of my professors from seminary years ago used. He wrote a book called The Crucible of Redemption, and one of the chapters in the book is called Company of Betrayers, and he makes the point that when Jesus said love one another and included everybody in the meal, he knew, didn't he know, that every one of them would eventually run away and deny, betray him. And so, Dr. Marnie says in his book, that means we are in good company tonight because we all let him down. We all fall short. Romans 5 says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We're, we're in that same company with all of them, a company of betrayers, which means, before you start to get depressed about that, Dr. Marty says what it means is we are all equally unworthy of being invited to his table, but we are invited to his table. In fact, the minute we start to say, well, look at me. You know, I'm kind of better than somebody else. I belong at his table. We're fooling ourselves. In fact, we all are equally unworthy. We are in the midst of a company of people, including me, who all have let him down. But... Jesus invites all of us. Some churches I've served over the years, and I don't know if this is one of them or not, kind of looking around at our sparse numbers makes me wonder. Some churches I've served, people avoid coming to communion because they think they're not worthy to receive it. But the truth is we're all worthy, not because of who we are, but because of who Christ is and the love that he offers us. Somewhere in our history, in fact, people used to have to have little communion cards in order to attend Holy Communion. Way back in the early Methodist days in America, communion was only offered once a quarter, and you had to have your card stamped 10 times out of 13 Sundays to be eligible to come then on Communion Sunday and receive communion. Wow, did we miss the point during those days, huh? We don't have a card you got to stamp. We don't have any self-proclaimed righteousness we got to earn. What we have to have instead is a willing heart that says, I hear the invitation is for all of us who are equally unworthy, but we're equally welcome because Christ is here and invites us. So listen to the invitation to communion from the communion liturgy and the hymnal and the book of worship. It says, Christ invites to his table who? All who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. And then we'll pray in a moment the prayer of confession. He invites to his table not everybody who's perfect, not everybody who's been to church enough Sundays this quarter, not everybody who feels kind of self-righteous by by contrast, those who know we need it, we're the ones who are welcome, and who earnestly repent. All repent means is turning around. It means I want to turn my life back toward God because I've gotten off track at times. And who seek, it's seek to live in peace. Not all who are living in peace, not who all live in perfect harmony with everybody in your family, in your world, your community, but it's all who simply want to draw near to Christ and seek to live in his peace. We're all welcome. So given that invitation, let's turn now to the prayer that will be on the screen and let's pray together our prayer of confession. Almighty God, 
To you all hearts are open and no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So in a moment we'll be inviting you to come forward and receive communion by intinction, it's called, which is probably most similar to the way the meal was shared that evening, which is you'll be given a piece of bread to dip in the cup and receive both at once. You don't have to hold them for us all to receive it at once. That'd be too messy. Receive it together. If after that you want to kneel in prayer, you're welcome to. Return to your pews and pray there. I'm going to invite you, I think, everybody to come down the center aisle, and even the cloaks, folks over there. Come over and come down the center aisle. We'll have stations here, including a gluten-free station. The choir will come down kind of behind the servers and receive from behind them. And this is a night to remember three things. Jesus said, a new command I give you, that you love one another as I've loved you. Second, Jesus said, do this remembrance of me. And thirdly, we're in good company tonight. We're all unworthy equally, but we're all equally welcome by the grace of Christ. So hear this prayer I offer over the elements, and then Perry and, and Aaron will be leading and serving you. I've got a cold, so I'm going to sit out from serving you, not to share germs. I'll receive with you. But let's pray tonight for these elements. Gracious God, we thank you for our remembrance this evening of Jesus, his disciples, of his betrayer, of his denier, of those who all got scared and ran away. Thank you for the remembrance that we are all welcome here, not because of our own goodness, but because of your gracious love. So we pray, Lord, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon these elements of bread and cup, that the sharing together of this bread and cup might indeed be a sharing with a living presence of Jesus Christ. Make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry to all the world. We pray in his name, and we pray the prayer that he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.